always here. Thank you, Jesus. They're always here for us. We're going to look at our associate pastor and youth pastor. Get on place. And then to my sister, who has been touched with fire this morning. Yes! Trust 
to be your humble little servant. Lord, just make it be great that it comes out of me. Just the way you would have it to come out. I know how powerful the word is. But give me your grace and your mercy. That I may do what you have me to do today. These and many other things we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. so much fire and being concerned that I deliver God's message the way he would have it to be delivered. Amen. I don't need to let me stand in the way. I don't need to let y'all stand in the way because I know that you all love me. But sometimes when I'm standing up here before you and watching you look at me, it's like I'm saying they wait for me to mess up. <laughs> mess up what God's word has told me to do. And then I look over to them too bad. <laughs> I know they're always in support of me. They've been pastor and wife. And that's what I say. I always know that. Me and my sister back here up in, up in the corner with me. <laughs> yeah, her husband because that's what me and my husband always say. Me and Doc always say we pattern ourselves like you guys. Because y'all showed us. We're the ones that we look to. Because if we want to do and be better and greater, we got to look above ourselves. Because we know sometimes the uncle's love can <laughs> possibly get in the way, but so far he hadn't let it get in the way. <laughs> I guess sometimes I think he's going to let the guard down. And then, big brother, you back there to kind of correct me if I'm getting too far off pace. I do listen to you when you're back there because a lot of times you got helpful things that can help me to endure and keep pressing forward, even if I think I got it wrong. <laughs> All right, if on today you guys will turn with me to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Right. It's a familiar passage of scripture, and I know some of y'all probably already are there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Galatians, the fifth chapter, starting at verse 19. And it reads, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, seditions, hearsay, envy, murder, drunkenness, rev rivaling, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have told you in the time past, that they which do not do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Y'all hear all of those? And I know some of them I didn't pronounce well, but if you're looking at them in your own Bible, you see exactly what they are. Amen. Some of the worst low down as things in there that we could be guilty of. Work of the but the fruit of the Spirit is love, Amen. joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Amen. That meekness and that temperance. I look at that temperance and I see patience. And I think in some Bibles it actually lists it as patience. But we got to learn not to be so quick to be angry. Amen. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. And yes, Nikki, I left those glasses in my my bag, I think. We're going to make it through, y'all. Amen. On today, we want to talk about patience is essential to achieve our dreams and goals. Because I'm sure everybody out there still has dreams and goals. We have to. We can't just dismiss our dreams and goals because this COVID is going on out there and acting and we don't dismiss anything. We don't even dismiss the word of God. Because if everybody knows, my husband announces all the time that Bible study and Sunday school are still going on. 
We know that we can't protect ourselves, but God can. Amen. We come out and learn more about his word and we learn how to pray Amen. and how to have patience. Because out of all of those fruits of the spirit that I mentioned on today, he has given me patience to talk to you guys about. We must have patience to endure all of this that's going on. And that's what he wants to tell everyone on today. Yes. Good morning again. Good morning. We're going to focus on patience on today. I've heard people say, don't pray for patience because you don't know what you're asking for. <laughs> because patience is too painful to deal with. And you know, at one point in time in my life, I truly believed that. Because I was guilty. I was an impatient person. So impatient, I wonder how my husband even stayed with me because nothing was ever right. I didn't like to wait. I didn't like to wait in lines. I didn't like to wait in school for my ride to come and get me, which was my husband. He shared one vehicle back then, and Lord, it was just, it would be a nightmare. Then when it seemed like I wasn't getting there on time, I was impatient about that. And half the time, it was me that wasn't getting us there on time. <laughs> but yet I would say, you got to be late again. You haven't and needing to blame someone. It was just, it was just horrible, y'all. When I look back and think about that, that was me. And now that he's helped to teach me, and I received it, received more patience, I can look back at it and say it was all worth it. So if you're sitting around here and you're being impatient and just hateful and fighting out at people, because that's what impatience will make you do. It puts anger into your heart. You want to blame everybody. And half the time, it's us. We, we're the ones that are doing all this stuff the wrong way. But when he teaches you patience, that you have to be willing to receive it. All those fruit of the Spirit should be in us, but sometimes we don't allow the Holy Spirit to instill it in us. So on the day, we're going to let you know how essential it is. And then you have those that will pray for God to hurry and give them patience, and they be wanting it right now. <laughs> give me patience and give it to me right now. They just like the man that wants the money. <laughs> on that little commercial. They want it now. I think. <laughs> but now. <laughs> and if I'd known what I know now, I would have been one of those that would have been screaming and wanting it now. But, you know, God acts in his time. That's right. Because right. patience is about waiting. Whether you are hesitant to pray for patience or if you just feel like ain't no hurry about no patience, you do me. You go ahead and keep doing you. No. But prayerfully after today, you'll be willing and acceptable of patience if you're having trouble there. You asked, what is patience? How many of you know when we talk about patience that there's a lot of different ideas that go on in our heads? Patience can be endurance, which is what I'll be speaking on today. Our staying power, you know, staying right there with with God's plan for your life and not running out on Him. Because He will give you inner strength. Some people say tolerance. I didn't like that one too well. A lack of a lack of complaining all the time. Didn't like that one too well. And then there's the still calmness. I like that. Trying to keep you calm. Because in acquiring peace I mean, patience, mm -hmm. it's helped me to be calm. Mm -hmm. And then it says, be persistent, or gaining personal courage. Those two were really, really great. Mm -hmm. And basically, just a willingness to wait. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. But what is patience, Bernie? What is it really? You gave me those definitions. I don't know if I still know what patience is. Mm -hmm. It's the what is the fruit known as patience? It is all of these things, or it is something else altogether, depending on how you, because we're all different. 
For starters, let's remember we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, not regular fruit. Paul lists nine different expressions of the Spirit, but they are all one. The fruit is all connected to each other. So, when you're fighting against one of the fruit, you're fighting against them all, really. Because you can't receive one without the other. When we see the word love, love is the blossom. Love is where the fruit of the Spirit begins. Without love, there is no fruit. In the same way, you will not have cherries without cherry blossoms, or apples without apple blossoms. You cannot have the fruit of the Spirit without love. You need to know that. So put a little point in there for that. You can't receive the Spirit without, without love. The first thing the Spirit does within our lives is put the love of God within us. Yeah. Remember also that we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit and not the fruit of the saints. Apart from the Spirit of God, these characteristics cannot be fully developed in our lives. The Spirit of God helps to put it there. Sometimes we're screaming and fighting, not going to receive it. We have said joy is love rejoicing. Peace is love resting. Love trusting. Patient is, patience is love enduring. Yeah. It's love that is durable and lasting. Patience is love that is not easily broken. Yeah. I like that. I took that from the movie. I'm sure y'all probably know. <laughs> How many of us would like to receive the kind of love from the people of our lives? That kind of love from the people of our lives. It's wonderful, guys. If you never encountered it, just wait on it. Guess what? You will most often receive the love that you give out. So think about the kind of love that you're giving out to others. When we think about patience as love enduring, a love that is not easily broken, then we are all more likely to want it. Don't it just make you think about it and want it? Because I love that not easily broken. That yes. means you're going to stand up and fight. Yes. And at that time in my mind, you're going to stand up and fight for your marriage. Yes. Where my mind was. Does this fit with what the Bible says? Paul wrote to the Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit is patience. Yes. What did he mean by patience? The fruit of the Spirit we are calling patience has also been translated as long suffering, mm -hmm. forbearance, and serenity. Mm -hmm. I've read those in other Bibles. What is the fruit of the Spirit? Is it really love enduring? A love not easily broken? Patience is the prolonged control of anger or restrained wrath. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Patience is the prolonged control because we have authority to control that. We don't have to let anger out every time we get a little bit upset. We can restrain from that. He tells us that we have the power to control it. Do you see now why patience are long-suffering, forbearance, and serenity? Whatever you may want to call it is really love enduring. Patience is a love that lasts. It is durable and will not be easily broken. I told you all picked up that word and ooh, I just love it. It's not easily broken. The picture of patience is my first thing to talk about. We can see the picture of patience when we read Matthew 18 verses 21 through 35. At the point Peter got up the nerve to ask, Master, how many times do I forgive a brother or sister who hurts me? Seven is what he was asking. And Jesus replied, seven, hardly. Try 70 times seven. Can we forgive anybody enough? Because has anyone ever reached 70 times seven with forgiving their spouse, forgiving their best friend? Because sometimes that little anger goes further than we want to. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is like 
a king who decided to square accounts with his servants. Y'all remember that story. As he got underway, one servant was bought to him who had ran up his debt to $100,000. He couldn't pay it up, so the king ordered the man, along with his wife, children, and goods, to be auctioned off at the slave market. The poor wretch threw himself at the mercy of the king's feet and begged, Give me a chance. Be patient with me, and I'll pay it all back. Yeah. Touched by the plea, the king then let him off, erasing his debt. Yes. Erased his debt. Now let's just look at what he does. The servant was no sooner out of the room when he came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him, what, $10? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no comparison to what he owed, but $10, y'all. Mm -hmm. And he seized him by the throat and demanded, pay up now. The poor wretch threw himself down and begged, give me a chance, be patient with me, same thing he used, and I'll pay it all back. But he wouldn't do it. He had him arrested and put in jail until the debt was paid. When the other servants saw this going on, they were outraged and brought a detailed report to the king. And, you know, as far as being tattletales, sometimes you have to speak the truth. Amen. The king summoned the man and said, You evil servant, I forgave you your entire debt when you begged me for mercy. Shouldn't you have compelled to be merciful to your fellow servant who asked for mercy? Mm -hmm. The king was furious and put the screws to the man until he paid back his entire debt. And that's exactly what my Father in heaven is going to do to each one of us who doesn't forgive unconditionally anyone who asks for mercy. That's a picture of patience. The responsibility of the servant to forgive is not dependent upon ordinary human emotions and feelings. The servant is not expected to show mercy because he is relieved and overjoyed that his debt had been canceled. Instead, the responsibility to be merciful is directly linked to attitude shown to him by his master. Think about that. Because we're in control of some of this stuff. Sometimes we don't want to be in control of it. And the best policy to me is, don't loan what you don't have to give. That was what my dad told me. Don't loan what you don't have to give. Because if you're going to need it right back, then you don't have it to loan. And that's the truth that you'll tell someone. I don't have it to loan. Because the king was patient with his servant, the servant should follow the example and lifestyle of the king. In other words, the servant should be patient with his fellow servants, whether he feels like it or not, simply because the master has been patient with him. Amen. God has been patient with us. Yes, Lord. His anger and wrath have been restrained. Amen. He has not treated us as we deserve to be treated all right. for all the sins that we've done. Yes. Because God is patient with us, he expects us to be patient with each other. Amen. This is why Jesus has given us his, his spirit, fruit of the spirit, to live within us. The spirit endows us to live like Jesus. The fruit of the spirit is long to anger. It's patience. Yes. My next point is the purpose of patience. But well on that picture of what patience looks like. Are we exercising that? Are we forgiving of others? And sometimes I know it seems like it's the worst thing that they could ever have done to us. But we must have that patience to forgive. The purpose of patience. The obvious question is, why is God patient with us? Have you ever thought about that? And in turn, why does God want us to be patient with us? I'm sure that's what's going on in your head. Do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you toward repentance? See, he's given us the opportunity to repent. Because sometimes we do act out of turn. And we'll be sorrowful for it, and we won't be willing to go to that person and just say, I know I said a lot of stuff, but 
I, I forgive you for that. Or even if they actually did, we ought to seek to see why they did it. What is God's purpose for being patient with us? God's patience leads us into repentance. As the wrath of God is restrained, we are given the opportunity to become friends of God. Look how the message Bible puts this verse. Or did you think that because he's such a nice God, this is actually Romans 2 and 4 from the message Bible, God, he led you off the hook. Better think this one through from the beginning. God is kind, but he's not soft. In kindness, he takes us firmly by the hand and leads us into a radical life change. That radical life change sometimes is what we need. Sometimes we are wondering what's going on. Like, God, what's going on? But sometimes he has to teach us a lesson. God is patient with us. He has taken us by the hand not to pour out his wrath. God takes us by the hand to lead us into a radical life change, a life of repentance whereby we can have a relationship with God. You ever met anybody that you knew was just so, so awful, always down on everybody, and then maybe a week or two later you see that person and he's changed. You almost don't want to believe it. But that person has received that radical life change from God. And we should be accepted of it. God isn't late with his promise. As some measure of lateness, he is restraining himself. He is patient. On account of you, holding back the end because he doesn't want anyone lost. He's giving everyone space and time to change. God has a single goal for us, for each of us, for all six billion plus us living today on this planet Earth, which I know is more than that. God does not want us to be separated from him for all eternity. He loves us so much he wants us to spend all eternity together with us. Therefore, he is patient. He withholds his wrath, giving everyone time to repent. Notice what Peter then says. This is in 2 Peter, the third chapter, verse 15. Interpret our master's patient restraint for what is salvation. The goal and purpose of God's patience is salvation. He wants all of us saved. God wants us to have an intimate and loving relationship with Him. That's also why God wants us to have patience. As we live a lifestyle of patience, God will use us to reconcile men to God as well as our own personal relationship with family and friends. And just a couple of weeks ago, I had met a sister and she was so angry with me, but she didn't really know the whole story. And when she first called to talk to me, because I asked her to call so I could figure out what was happening, but it was because she didn't have the whole story and know that my heart was being pure to want to help. And it wasn't a way to try to you know, put anybody down or do anything like that. And so she listened to someone else that and heard what the statement was, or the action that I took. That's what I better say. But it was all from the heart. And at first, she wouldn't listen to me. And I said, well, sister, I'm going to leave you alone. I'm glad you called me. I said, but I'm going to let you alone until you're ready to hear you know, what's true. I said, I'll let you calm down and do that. And then I'll try and call you later. But lo and behold, the next day, she called me back. and allowed me, she said, I, I'm really apologizing for the way I behave. I don't really know you that well. I know of you. And I didn't really want to believe that you would, you know, say or do something like that to hurt me. And I said, well, if you have time, then I'll give you the whole story. And of course, she was willing to listen. So God, he heard that prayer because I prayed to him. Because I couldn't get a word in edgewise, and I didn't want to talk to her in anger either. Right. And I, that Holy Spirit gave me that, that fruit, Amen. that patience, that I just allowed her to just let off her steam, which is probably what she needed. And I just listened, and I didn't, you know, say anything. And I then thanked her at the end. Like I said,
said she called right back the next day and apologized. And then we've been semi-talking since then, because I, I don't think I've totally won her over. But, you, know, you just do what God has for you to do, and then someone else will do the next part. My last topic is the practical practice of patience. We have to practice what we preach, is what we hear. The old saying, every fruit is known of, known of has protected out of, has been protected out of there. Now this is regular fruit. We peel a banana, an orange, we peel an orange to eat the fruit inside. Other fruits like the apple or the grape, we can actually eat the skin off of it. The layer, the outer layer, serves as important purpose as an important purpose. It keeps, it helps keep the moisture inside the fruit. Even in dry seasons, the outer peel will also protect the fruit and allow it to grow. If the outer peel or skin is broken or removed, then the fruit will rot and spoil. Hmm. Patience is like that for the soul of a man. Patience protects our hearts and becomes rancid, bitter, and rotten to the core. Mm -hmm. See what can happen when you don't let the peace go in and God's making all of the aims for us to be able yeah. to receive all this fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. God wants our lives to be sweet yeah. and appealing to others. Yeah. That's the purpose of the fruit of the Spirit, mm -hmm. to give our lives the aroma and the taste of Jesus. Mm -hmm. That was a wonderful yeah. thought. Yeah. The practical practice of patience restores and protects relationships. Godly patience enables us to show mercy instead of hate, to forgive instead of seeking revenge. Patience is the ability to put up with people you like to put down. Yeah. And I remember in my life there were a lot of people that I felt I needed to do that to. And I'm thanking God for allowing me to have grown on the young on the back. Because you never really have to say anything. You can listen to them and then you can just walk and go your way. You don't have to say anything. I have often said, we must learn to trust the heart and when necessary, forgive the hands. Pinch your neighbor and guess what? You will probably feel good about, about it and that will say, ouch. They will say, ouch. Why are you? Are we all human? Yes, we are. Yes. Yes. Hurting others comes naturally to us. The longer you are in a relationship with other people, eventually you will be hurt. That's when you need to trust their heart and forgive the hands. Okay. To be patient, slow to anger. And guess what? It is not an opinion. Remember, the servant who begged the master for patience with him because the king was slow to anger and forgave the dead. The servant should follow the example of the master and do likewise. That's examples for us also. We should take it to heart and know. Ephesians 4 and 2, and this one I got out of the New International Version. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Patience is love enduring. It's love that lasts and won't be broken by anger. We are to the point with a long fuse. We give allowance to each other, faults and shortcomings. In Colossians 3 and 12, 12 and 13. Therefore, as God chose people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgives of you. Patience is not out idleness. It doesn't mean you are nothing. Patience is active. The patient man is always ready to meet his neighbor halfway instead of building fences. Patience builds bridges to maintain relationships. That's what you want to build bridges for, not to try to get away from your neighbors. But I could actually go on and on because there are lots of scriptures, but I just wanted to list these 
for those who may need to go back and just look. Father patience is not simply a character trait or quality an individual may possess. Patience is a lifestyle. Yes. And I tell you, it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You totally have to go through that radical change that I spoke about earlier. Wow. It is a way of life that affects all our relationships. Patience is an expression of love because love is patience. Because yeah. I remember first starting out in my marriage, I did not have all of that patience. And people that have grown up with me and know me know that I always haven't been this patient or calm or slow to anger. But, you know, as God works on me, because I did, I finally asked, God, give me patience. I don't like the way that I am. I didn't like the arguments. I didn't like any of that. And if we were angry with one another, me and my husband, we would just wait a while before we would, you know, try to even talk about it. Because you need that time out. You need it with other people too that you don't really realize it, but you need it with friends, associates. Because sometimes it could cost you your job by just mouthing off not going to hold in the anger, feeling like I'm going to get them before they get me. Now my dad, he kind of taught us that though anyway. He said, if you know somebody's out to get you, you get them first. <laughs> he would tell me that uh, me and my older sister, we was fighters for sure. <laughs> and I feel my husband can remember that. <laughs> Patience being slow to anger enables us to live a good life. Patience will keep us from embarrassing ourselves by what we say or do. Yeah. Proverbs, first, oh, I said I'm going to read them. I'm going to let that go. God wants, the, wants us to be slow to anger. He wants to enable us by his Holy Spirit to, to be slow to anger, put it twice, to restrain our wrath. Why? God is patient to lead us to repentance. His patience offers us salvation, a relationship with God that will last for all eternity. Likewise, our patience with others is to restore and renew our relationships with one another. Further, our patience can be used by God to bring others to salvation as well. And here at the Mount, that's what we talk about. We want to bring others to salvation. Amen. Preach the word, be prepared, and see and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instructions. You may not be a preacher, but your testimony can be can be read through impatience. You hear that? If impatience comes out first, you won't be able to tell anyone anything. Yeah, You're definitely not going to be able to witness to them. Yeah. By cutting your feud short and blowing up in anger, God does not want our lives to be stumbling blocks for others. Amen. He wants us to use our lives to bring others to repentance. That's our eternal practical practice of patience. How can we have patience? I went and I found another verse. We must be connected to Jesus. Amen. You can't really witness to somebody else if you haven't gone there and gotten to know Jesus for yourself. Amen. And John 15 and 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relation, the relation intimate, I misspelled something here, and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separate you, separated, you can't produce anything. Remain ever thankful for God's patience in your life, being mindful of how God's Patience will remind us of our responsibility to do likewise. Ask God to help. Yes, pray for patience. God will equip you to live a lifestyle of patience. Amen. Or you can face conflict or hurtful relationships on your own. See, he'll leave us by ourselves if we choose not to go the way of patience. I thank God for all today. And this is the message that he had for me to bring. No thrills, no extra, just a straight word of God to let us know that he wants us to endure with patience. And that way our dreams will be answered. Our goals will be answered. 
the goal that he has for us will be answered. Amen. For these few words, I thank you.